What's up everyone, welcome back to another video. In today's episode, we'll be doing a DIY style coolant reroute on the Turbo Miata. Like I mentioned in the last video, I do wanna start pushing the Miata a little bit harder. I wanna start taking the track days, that type of thing. Um, if you know anything about Miata cooling systems, you know that they do have a suboptimal routing from the factory, at least for this generation. So it is a common mod. If you haven't heard of it, let's just take a break and talk about it real quick. So here's the diagram for the coolant system on the Miata. We'll get started at the water pump, which is gonna push that coolant across the cylinders. Some of it's gonna exit at the rear to go through the heater core circuit, as well as the oil filter and throttle body. Uh, most of it's gonna go up through the head and then exit the front at the coolant neck. If the thermostat opens, it'll go through the radiator. If not, it'll just simply go back through the mix and manifold and continue the cycle. So we'll notice that the front of the engine is both the inlet and the outlet. In practice, what this means is we'll see better cooling efficiency at the frontmost cylinders, whereas cylinders three and four will start to taper a bit. And that's just because the coolant is following the easiest path, which is to simply go back towards the front of the engine. So you're probably wondering, well, why did Mazda do that? Well, it's pretty simple. It, the engine did come from a transversely mounted car. So they did rotate the engine, which left very little room at the outlet where the firewall is. So it was a bit of a design compromise. By forcing the coolant to go in through the front and then exit the rear, we are gonna ensure that we have equal cooling performance across all of our cylinders. So with the rear out, we're not really trying to increase our capacity of the coolant system. We're really just trying to standardize the temperatures across all of the cylinders. So if you are in a stock configuration and you're overheating, you'll probably want to attend to that before doing a reroute. With my implementation, I am also removing the heater core circuit and the throttle body as well as oil filter. So I'm going for the most minimal setup possible. Now that you guys are familiar with a reroute, the way that I'm going to do this is very DIY and budget friendly. There's definitely kits out there that you could use that are super nice and put together. Um, but I want to try to use as many of the OEM parts as I can and kind of flip things around. Besides new hoses, one of the only really new parts that I'm going to use is the aftermarket water mixing manifold. Um, but we'll get into all of those details as we kind of go through the process. So with all of that out of the way, let's get started. We'll get started by draining the coolant. Next, we'll remove the lower radiator hoses. And next, we'll move on to the upper radiator hose. Up next, we'll get the coil packs and some vacuum lines out of the way. And now we finally get to remove this hideous heater core bypass. And finally, we should have room to work on a rear coolant housing. Here we have the rear housing that we just removed. This previously had our coolant sensor threaded into it. We have our front thermostat housing here. We'll be putting this on the rear without the thermostat and we'll be reusing the plug for the sensor. We'll be using a few of these caps to block off any unused ports. 
And here we have our bypass style thermostat. This is gonna route coolant in one direction before it hits the target temperature and then another once it does. We'll start by installing the front thermostat housing in the rear, without the thermostat of course. To the left of the housing, we'll see a plug where we'll be able to thread our coolant sensor into. We'll cap the line that previously went to the oil filter housing and throttle body. At this point, we have our front thermostat housing installed and flipped up, as well as our cap. Next, we'll continue to remove the line that was coming from the oil filter housing to the throttle body. At this point, I also decided to upgrade to the NB idle control valve just to make it a little bit cleaner so I wouldn't have another additional line coming from my intake pipe. Now that we have some additional space in the bay, we'll get our thermostat ready. We'll have one end connected to the rear housing and then our bottom port, which will funnel coolant before the thermostat opens, will be a five inch line going to our mixing manifold and then the other end will be going to our radiator. And here's the, how the top radiator line ended up. We were able to use the lower coolant hard pipe and then paired that with one and a quarter inch silicone tubing. All right, and now we'll install a block off plate where the front thermostat used to be. And before we install it, I did want to drill and tap it for my existing aftermarket Innovate coolant temp sensor. All right, and now we'll install our aftermarket mixing manifold from R Theory Motorsports. I chose this unit because it's super slim, has a lot of configuration options you could go with, and it'll make it really easy to connect to the lower radiator. Since we no longer have our heater core circuit, we're gonna connect the front port to our bypass thermostat, and then the rear port will be connected to one of our turbo coolant lines. And now we'll start working on the lower radiator line. I had this 45 degree aluminum pipe and I decided to try out one of those cheap bead rollers and it worked surprisingly well. After that, I added two more couplers and connected everything together. Next, I capped off the unused port that was previously being used as one of the coolant lines to the turbo. And after that, I installed the NB throttle body. This involved capping one of the ports off on my intercooler piping, as well as pinning the connectors on the idle control valve and throttle body position sensor. And finally, the end is near now all we have to do is relocate the coil pack since there's no more room at the back of the head anymore. Like I mentioned in my last video, I do intend on making a full COP conversion, so uh, this is only temporary, but I think it's good for now. And here's the final product. We still have some wiring cleanup to do, but I did want to try everything out and make sure there's no leaks before we did that. All right, so I've been driving the Miata for the past few days to see if there's any issues that pop up, see how the cooling is working. Um, we did have one little leak on the lower radiator hose, which has been resolved after tightening the clamps. Um, as far as the coolant performance, everything seems great. 
uh, temperatures are holding just fine. Again, this wasn't really to add more capacity or anything like that, it's just to get more consistent cooling across all of the cylinders. Now that we have that flow working, I'm pretty happy with that and I'm feeling more confident once we take this car to the track and that type of thing. One of my favorite parts is actually the bypass thermostat. It's pretty cool to kind of see how it's working and be able to feel it. Before the car gets up to temperature, you could feel the coolant going through the lower section. And then once it gets up to temperature, you can see it going through the much larger hose. So I think it's a pretty neat solution. I'm glad I came across that. Overall, I'm really happy with how this reroute went. I think it looks pretty clean. Um, it was obviously budget friendly and looking forward to seeing um, how it holds up. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.